بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان دا نیم آف گاڈ دا موسٹ بیوٹیفل دا موسٹ لونگ دا موسٹ امیزنگ دا موسٹ کمپیشن دا موسٹ مرسیفل دا موسٹ پاورفل دا موسٹ کائنڈ ریل We come today with the intention to know you better, feel your proximity to us better, feel how you are more real than we think, how you are more present than we think, how you are ever present than we what we always imagine as if you are away. Help us with our intention. We want to set our intention high. We want to set our prayer high so that we have this vision. And our vision is to feel your presence every moment, every day. Let us walk towards that, whatever we are, and not wait for it. Help us to achieve this beautiful prayer that we have, that you have inspired us to ask for. <clears throat> oh Allah, help us in seeing how you are present in even the difficulties that we are having throughout days, in every moment of our days. Help us to see you there with us. Amen. Okay, uh, today uh, the topic is how to make this Ramadan the happiest time of the year. <laughs> yes, that's, that's the topic, the happiest time of the year. And when I say happy, I really mean really happy. And what I mean by happy, like when you say happy, like should we start dancing? No, like feeling totally blessed, feeling great, feeling that uh, peaceful. Because um, if we don't set it depends where we want to set our bar. But if we set our bar lower, that's what we get. So generally we talk to each other saying, ah, oh, it's in the summertime, it's really difficult, you know, we'll just go through it, you know, Allah will help us. See, I mean, it's the, the bar is already set very low. So we are already asking, we are already predicting that, oh my God, we are just, we just have to bear it. We have to bear Ramadan. <sighs> Only if I was in the Muslim. No, no, no. Sorry, I, I won't say that. <laughs> I'm kidding. But we almost reach to the point that, yeah, but Allah will reward us, you know, in the day of judgment, ah, you know, with paradise, inshallah. So we have to bear it. And there is this almost feeling that we are sacrificing so that Allah will give us this beautiful things sometime then. So here though, we are talking about something the totally opposite of that. So just to let you know, so I'm speaking clear. So uh, if Allah is saying to me, if God is saying to me, Ramadan is good for you, it means it's good for me now. If he's saying it's good for me, good means khair in Arabic, means, wow, it's full of blessings, full of joy, full of happiness, full of connection, full of the time where we say, oh my God, this is such an amazing time, I will miss it. Ah, okay. Yeah. But I don't see myself there. So, if I don't see myself there, or I don't see that I will get such a, an experience from Ramadan, 
what are the obstacles that uh, prevent me from that? So first, it's basically to see what is the promise, and then to see uh, why we are unable to experience or to get to that promise. But if we, in the beginning, say, no, there is no such promise, then we already leveled, we already started the game in, in a feeling that we are, we are already lost. Uh, but this feeling happens because of not complete understanding of the purpose. Yes, and that's why today, inshallah, we want to reflect on that. We want to reflect on, on, on that God willing. Uh, okay, so it, do you think it's possible to have Ramadan as the happiest time of the year? <laughs> For me, it is the happiest time. Beautiful. Because I, like, I really, I don't have that feeling any other time in the year. Wow. Except Ramadan. Beautiful. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
That's me. I don't like that. Then I will be so angry. I'll say, what? I don't want Ramadan. Right? But if I realize I put that space between, that, wow, this is a time for me, me meaning the spirit me, to get all the air time rather than the body. Yeah. So it's 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 in, in that sense what you mentioned even a thirty day water fast. People when they do fast, any tradition or even no tradition, even for health reasons, uh, they will uh, feel many spiritual benefits because in not activating the body for a certain period of time, we realize that there is still an alertness. Like what is where is that coming from? Like. I thought what makes me alert is the coffee I have in the morning. But now I am even more. And, and not only that, a sense of uh, connection with nature, with like, like a subtle, subtle connection. It's almost like you feel more alive in a way uh, than when we are so heavily focused just on the bodily side of us, rather than the other side. Yeah? Wow. Any thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> I think that it has, uh, well, it's going to be happiest time because it's, for me, I look at it as opportunity for healing. Mm -hmm. Well, like, first of all, more getting closer, connecting, closer, more closer to God, but it's also healing body, you know, like just Beautiful. cleansing. Yes. <laughs> that's a really I'm excited about it because that's a, I'm okay. looking at it the drastic change after <laughs> like mm -hmm. become a new me. <laughs> that is such a good thing. I, I I think that if we have uh, certain goals, then we can measure ourselves at the end of Ramadan how we did that. But if we just go unprepared, we just basically say, oh, you know, I will just do it and it will just be happening. And it just happens. And then we just get the tiredness out of it. So that's beautiful yeah, to think of all dimensions, all dimensions. Renewal. Renewal. Of the body. Yes. Uh, I, I, uh, this is a while ago, I was uh, talking to someone about the body. Yeah. And I Day and how our body regenerates. Yes. Really, anything that's affecting our body can disappear if uh, we, you know, re, uh, regenerate yes. with cells and yes. kind of rebuild our body. I mean, we <laughs> rebuild our body. Yeah. I think that's a, our mind is a good opportunity. Yeah. Rejuvenate everything. Yeah. Uh, there is a wonderful yeah. TED talk. Uh, Intermittent fasting, Ramadan is an intermittent fasting type, which means you fast for an intermittent for a specific period, then you eat, then you fast, then you eat. So intermittent fasting, in fact, became very popular in today's culture. There's a TED talk on intermittent fasting, several actually. There is one that's called Fast Five. This man who, who discovered that many of the illnesses just can be cured if he just have a five our eating period of the day, and he fasts other times. And he talks about it, he has books about it, people are, you know, uh, that's not the only person, there are many. So, uh, so that's definitely, uh, 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 yeah. What do you mean by five hours? Like five hours at like once you eat for just five hours? Yeah, so he says, you know, pick this five hours, you know, so for us it would be 8.30 to whatever, let's say. <laughs> One or two hours, whatever. And he says that the other part he fasts. Uh, he doesn't do dry fasting. I think he drinks water. But still, they are talking scientifically about all these benefits that this gives. Dry fasting actually even gives more benefits to the body. Because when the body, I read many things about this, when the body uh, is getting water, when it's not getting any water, it needs water. So it goes to all the cells to find that water, and that helps the whole metabolism to be renewed, rather than getting water is not the same, not the same benefit in a way. It's also beneficial, but 
for that purpose. Um, anyway, so maybe we can read some of these. Or do you have any other things, any other goals or? Uh, I think one of the one of the purposes of Ramadan also is, of course, we want to make it the happiest Ramadan when we can, and it's to continue going instead of stopping it in the Ramadan. You know, it's to continue. It's to learn something. It's a period where we we feel this connection. We feel this um, uh, the help. <coughs> But it's to continue going there to, to learn something from it. And of course, we're learning the Quran and Ramadan too at the same time. To continue that track of reading the Quran, it's just a, this, the Ramadan is just a reminder. It's a real, you know, get back into, get back onto the track. Yes. <laughs> Very nice. This is a very nice group uh, of individuals, I must say, because uh, you know many people when they speak honestly about Ramadan, they say you know I become very angry, very agitated. I don't want to deal with anything. I just think you know this is so difficult, but you know we have to do it. So it seems that hey, everybody is just looking forward to Ramadan. I'm so, 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 so surprised to, to tell you the truth. I'm so sorry. Yes. Yes. Who are you fooling? You fooling yourself or you fooling God? Yes. So we need basically to find that, to, to, to get, why is, why is my Creator wanting me to fast 30 days? What is, and once we ask that question and we are open for that, then we can say in Ramadan, I feel totally blessed. Not totally blessed when I am, not totally blessed when I am uh, just eating, but during the day, during that hunger, how can I feel totally blessed? That's, when I ask that question, then many things start to come, right? Yeah, this is, this is. And, and each other day we'll reflect on some uh, of these together uh, with some reading. So yeah, it's a good time to, to reflect. Okay. So a um, couple of verses in the Quran, uh, in close translation. You who believe fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you so that you may be conscious of God. So the goal, the main goal is to is to be conscious of God. To, for, and how can we be conscious of God if we are conscious of our spirits? Uh, if we are just uh, defining ourselves by our body, uh, we can never experience God's proximity. Point. Because God's proximity is through our formless side, because God is formless. Uh, so, the more I can realize that I am much more than this. I am the one who is given the ability of recognizing the divine qualities everywhere, of uh, recognizing who God is through my spirit. So that 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 so it's a time for that. Because you're dependent yes. on him to support. Yes, and we feel another type of sustenance. Yes. So, see, normally, if you bring a dead uh, body here, and you put all the food you want around, nothing will, will do, right? Because that body needs the divine uh, breath, the spirit that's within us. That's actually the real sustenance that we have 
24-7. But when we say, I depend on this stuff here, then I am basically not reflecting on how the divine is sustaining me all the time from within and through all these things. So it's a time to basically recognize that almost if you say divine energy, that energy that is given, that is always here, uh, and the food itself is actually an expression of that. But, but in that time, like for instance, I can feel hunger in my body, but I can say, but I am still alive, and feel, I can close my eyes, and feel almost like this divine energy pouring down inside. And if we just do that exercise in Ramadan, every time we feel hungry, it says, oh, what do I do now? I feel hungry. No, no, no. Oh, my body feels hungry, but I am just being fed with this. Wow, it's Allah is just feeding me with his light. We are basically recognizing that we are lights. We are, we are really creations of light, light meaning energy that are using this body, not body that has a spirit. Spirit that is playing with this physical space. It really, the reality of us is the spirit. So each time we say, oh no, no, this is just a habit of my, my body. In fact, I am alive through this divine energy. And not saying it, feeling it, really closing our eyes and feeling it. And, and, and that gives us that energy, that alertness, which many people say. Uh, uh, I also was very interested sometime in water fasting for health reasons and was reading people after like five days after this period of their addiction to, to coffee or things, suddenly they just feel that not even, there is no even hunger, yeah. right? <laughs> you, yeah. It's actually like for me. Yeah. It's easier to fast than not to not fast because mm. I actually feel better during that. There's Interesting. Toxins in your body. Yeah. The problem is when I go back to eat, mm. not eat. It's on shallow. It's one of my goals is to go and do more of a plant-based. Yes, alive food. Yeah. Food that is closer to the spirit, exactly. yeah. <laughs> which is alive. I feel like even food has energy. Yes. Yeah. And you know what we do to keep the food on the shelves? We kill it. So we take all possible, all possible possibilities of it being alive. We put it. We put actually some chemicals in it so it can stay that way forever. You know, like we see some pictures of these hamburgers. I don't know if you saw these news. For 20 years, it oh, stays the same. It, oh, yeah. it doesn't break down because it's pink slime. It's not actual meat. It's treated. No, yeah, but all the chemicals, so how can nothing, they, how can bacteria. things break down? Bacteria doesn't want to eat it. It's just, uh, no, I am, I am, uh, yeah. I believe it's an ether that said, don't let your side break down to the animals, right? Is that an no? I, I don't remember it, but it might be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Graveyard for the animals. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't eat too much heat. Like, don't eat meat all the time. Mm. Yeah. Yes, yes. That was actually a prophetic practice. Mm. He would eat meat occasionally. Uh, anyways. Uh, uh, so, uh, in another verse, to fast is to do good unto yourselves, if you but know. And that I find so amazing, this verse. Because it invites us to this, if you but know, like, we kind of, but if you get curious, you will know, you know, what, what, is, what is the goodness that fasting can bring to me? And this can be different for each one of us. So maybe we can do this exercise. Like we can all close our eyes and say, what am I expecting this goodness to be like for me uh, in this Ramadan? And picture it. Instead of, instead of going to, to Ramadan in a way of uh, just, you know, without any plan, invite, you almost like, invite your spirit and body to reveal to you uh, what are you looking for in this time? How can it be the best time ever in your lives? 
So maybe we can spend two minutes in close eyes and then we can share some of that. <clears throat> Okay. Um, anyone would like to share anything? I, uh, <laughs> I have a lot to share. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if everyone really knows, but I have uh, health issues with my stomach, so that's um, that is a big thing for me now. And I'm picturing. I actually read this somewhere in the, this doctor was talking about imagery. How you put imagery? It's interesting when you said that I just started imagining my colon, my intestine so clean and comfy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, uh, and healed, completely healed. So that's my goal. That's my what I'm achieving. Beautiful. And I know that by the end of Ramadan, I'll be completely healed. And going forward, I'll keep Susan's life ready. You know, I'm gonna switch my eating habits and try to go all, you know, natural stuff, inshallah. Mm -hmm. So I know that's gonna be a big change for me. I'm Beautiful. Forward, and I, I can see all the healing in my body. Exciting! So you're looking yeah, forward to it. <laughs> 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 also, direction, uh, that was in the Hadith, it was a narration from Imam Ali. Imam Ali, beautiful. Thank you, thank you. It's so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. thank you. What is it? GAPS, because I'm going to try to start that with my daughter. I'm going to hear the best. She has some GAPS. GAPS. I'm going to send you the link. GAPS. I don't know, that's I never heard of that. I heard about a lot of stuff. Okay. It's going to be all information in your stomach. It's very restrictive. Yeah, I know. Yeah, no, I, I completely, you know, Ramadan, it's because it's amazing that because there was a, the last couple of years I had to do colonoscopies, multiple colonoscopies in one year, like three or four of them. And I don't know if any one of you had done colonoscopy, but you have to cleanse your body yeah. completely before you go to a colon. It's an amazing feeling on you because you have. Two days before you have to do the cleansing, go on the only liquid diet and uh, to make sure because then the test would be uh, accurate and all that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not sure too much. But it's amazing the, the feeling that you feel when you're completely cleansed. Yeah, and that's, it's really, we need that. I think Ramadan is uh, for a reason God, uh, I think, I, I strongly believe Ramadan is for our health, for our own benefit. <laughs> yeah, it's like a prescription from God. <laughs> <laughs> prescription. Yeah. yeah, it's like a pres prescription given to us for free. And we, 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 we and the reason I, I have to admit before we didn't look at it that way because the way we were fed from society, it's like you know, if you don't do it, you're like you're going to be in trouble with God. Yes. But if you look at it as it's more like for your own benefit, I think that changes the whole. It's a word is right now. Yes. Yeah. It's a word is right now. With 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 uh, eternal implications. You know? So if I don't see the um, like for instance here it says when the month of Ramadan comes the gates of paradise are open. The gates of paradise are open now for me to experience paradise, which means full feeling, fully blessed. 
happy, peaceful, connected, and for it to, to continue uh, for the hereafter. But if we just do it as, you know, like, yeah, so I, I was doing a similar teaching some years ago, and then one, I remember uh, one person said, you know, no, you know, I, I do fasting, you know, it's very hard for me, it's a big sacrifice, and God will award me for the sacrifice. And I felt like, you know, okay, that's fine for this person, but it, 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 it feels very disconnected. It's like almost, it's like, it's like almost, I have to go through pain so that God can do something for me. Uh, it, it, instead of that, actually, in fact, if it's very hard for me, if I can't fast, God says, don't fast if you are sick. If you have to take medication, don't fast. You know, I see some friends, for instance, I was out of town. So God gives us the opportunity, the ability to combine the prayers, to shorten the prayers. And I am so happily using them. I love it. And it's amazing. God is pretty, he wants, he's a generous creator. And I had to, a friend of mine who was having a hard time. He wants to pray on time, in the, in the five times, and in a longer period. Of course, it's his choice. But he, I didn't feel he was happy doing it. Like it was a happiness thing. It was great. That's great. But uh, sometimes we are taught, as you said, in the culture, it's as if we have to go through certain difficulties so that we are, you know, awarded. That is a, that is a, a mindset in a way. Right now, we, right we, now. yes, That's right the now, thing. yes. Not only in the Siam, not only in Ramadan, but even in the, the spiritual aspect of Salat. And because the way we're taught is if you don't do it, you go into Jahannam, you go into, you know, you help. But instead of looking at it, it's for your own good. You're doing this because you're actually in a better space. Yes. You're more connected, your soul is happier. You're at peace, and if Please, any person I love, yeah, I surely, yeah. you know, and I fear to displease <laughs> my creator who <laughs> I love. So that's that's beautiful. Yes. 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 But she means she means out of not love. Yes. You know, because I see people and they're like, oh, 
and then five minutes later they're angry and kind of it's, I'm like kind of cracking a smile at their own neighbor, you know? So yes. I get what you're saying. Yeah, no, I have nothing against actually, but I, I think, and I'm still not there yet. I'm still myself working yes. on that aspect. It's, we are on the journey, so and that's beautiful. I that's am beautiful. very, I'm just yes. at the beginning, but I, I think it's beautiful since I've found this place and <laughs> these people. I, I think it's beautiful to look at it the way you're looking at it, like in the, oh, yeah. you know, it's a fast, you know, it's like because of the soul. Jean, do you mind reading the, this poem uh, here? Or, or the okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, fickle busybody, it's time to change your ways. Can you see the one who's selling the halva? How long will it be the halva you desire? Let nothing be inside of you. Be empty. Give your lips to the lips of the reed. When like a reed you fill with his breath, then you'll taste sweetness. Sweetness is hidden in the breath that fills the reed. <coughs> be like Mary. By that sweet breath, a child born of the Halva is, it, uh, is uh, sweet, sweet. sweet. Oh, it's, uh, yeah, so so sweet in a way. Uh, we how long are we just concentrating on the sweet instead of the seller of the sweet? Is a metaphor. How long are we just uh, a, a, a addicted to the creation and not looking at the creator who is uh, creating all this creation? The whole point of the creation is to show us the creator. But we forgot that connection, and we are just now addicted to the creation for its own sake. So now we are actually in Ramadan, we are invited to be empty. Empty meaning for a while, just to taste what emptiness is and the breath, that spirit that, uh, that is here the breath of God, the spirit, that's, that is the biggest gift. And to find the real sweetness. When we find that, when we come to the food, then the food also becomes spiritual. You know, like, like the Ramadan is spiritualizing everything. It's not putting a, a line between the physical and the spiritual. First, we need to do that because we became so attached to the physical. So we go to the spirit, when we go to the spirit, we come back to the physical with the sweetness of the spirit to realize that everything that was physical actually is spiritual. The food is spiritual. It's meant to be God's wind. Uh, God is showing, you know, see how sweet things I do. See how beautiful I am. See how sustainer I am. He's talking to us through the food. But our... Uh, ears, spiritual ears, are so cloggy with our addiction to the food itself. Food meaning all kinds. When I say food, I mean physical. Physical things that we desire, whatever is uh, out there, right? So, so we are invited to go back to, to discover the sweetness within, so we see the sweetness everywhere. Uh, it's an amazing... practice for our, uh, it's an amazing practice in that way, yes. In practically speaking, yes. in Ramadan, yes. when we eat food, yes. it tastes so much better than food. <laughs> yes, that's... Because we have the same food now, and it's like, yeah. oh, it has so much salt, it's not so tasty. Yeah. But after you go fast to the memory, the food is so fulfilling, so tasty. Yeah. Yes. 
If we stop there, actually, our body will will be so happy. <laughs> what happens in our in our culture? Uh, you know, when I go, like, for instance, to invited to a place, so, no, no, you have to eat one more, one more. Then you feel like, oh my God, all these benefits. <laughs> now I don't feel them anymore. Uh, but what you said is so true. It's so true. Beautiful. That's it. Because it, like, yes. That's what I want to do today. They want Greek and two scoops and salads. Is it Tunisian? Yeah, it's Tunisian. Why is this the break? We have break every night. Greek. 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 So, and here, uh, and, uh, yes. I, when I think about it, even lunchtime, how much time do you spend going out to get food and come back? Yes. It's a whole hour, yes. hour and a half circuit. Yes. You know, so you take, use up that time to do something yes. more. Yes. Yeah. And we can play, we can plan our days. Let's say, you know, it's a long day, maybe we want to have a nap, but let's say we are working all day. So instead of, you know, we won't get lunch, that one hour can be a nap. Uh, I used to get naps this way in my car. Sometimes I used to when I used to work a long time ago. Uh, now it, it's a little different, but uh, too hard to do that here. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can turn on the AC. You know that can be instead of paying for the food. <laughs> it's not good for the environment. Though. So we have to think about another another solution. But we can also uh, ask for changes in our schedules if that will help. You know, we can work seven to three, and then we come back three, maybe three to five, sleep a little bit. Uh, just get the body a little bit adjusted and then uh, spend 5 to 8.30 in a better way, you know, maybe even preparing food or spending some good time or reading spiritual material, the Quran, or something that feeds our soul. But we, we need to plan for it. If we just say, you know, it will be just fine, then it doesn't work that way. So planning is beautiful. Spiritual planning and practical planning too, to keep everything set in the best way <laughs> to, to, to get benefit. And here it says, you know, sweetness is hidden in the breath that fills the reed. And it's such a beautiful thing. I don't know if you know the reed, but it's like the flute. It's, um, so the idea here, uh, well, that the reed was very popular during his time. So uh, he, he used to give so many examples about the reed. Because he felt that it's exactly how we are. The more we are empty, the more we feel this sweetness of the breath, the divine breath. And we just, everything becomes intuitive. Like life becomes as if life is lived, lived. Not, not like we have to try everything. Like God, the, the master of everything, we realize he's actually preparing everything. You, you, an idea comes to you, some friends that know this idea are excited, comes to, everything is planned in a way. But when we are not in that mindset, it's like we have to do everything, we are full with ourselves. We are full with the idea that I am the one who does everything rather than recognizing that there is a real doer, the real who is actually, uh, who is here actually doing the whole show. It's just that we are not, because we are not recognizing it, we are like crazy thinking that we are doing even though we are not. So it's an invitation for that. And a beautiful example from, from uh, Mary. Uh, and there's a Quranic verse actually related to that when uh, uh, Zacharias comes to, to her and says, where do you find your food from? And she says, you know, God feeds me. So that, that is such an important verse actually in the Islamic spiritual tradition. It's so important because God feeds me is the recognition that I am being fed spiritually. So even like literally speaking, there are people who can go without food, spiritual people like yogis, for months, some for years. There is this one person I think was on the, on, on the news. He hasn't eaten like for 30 years. Yeah, and, and, and they took him actually, they did, re, uh, they put, took him to the lab, this, person so that he claimed he never eaten and, and they studied him and then wow this happens how is he not eating and he's alive 
uh, that's not to say that's what we need to do, but that's, that's a reminder to us that actually it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, I am 100% dependent on the external food. There is a sweetness, there's real breath inside. And we're talking here about 15 hours of time where we can really go without food, but not with difficulty. Our body might not get used to it for some time, but we can say, oh my God, I realize I am free, I am the spirit. The feast of the spirit starts in Ramadan. So it's not the end of Ramadan. The feast of the spirit, it's full divine energy. You just wash yourself with it. You don't have to worry about water, worry about all that stuff that reminds you that you have this body. It's like, wow, it's, the spirit gets a vacation from the body. Oh. The body itself even can be spiritualized, but I'm just saying, it's really that way we are training ourselves, so that in daily lives, we remind ourselves that we are really, first and foremost, spirits, uh, not bodies. The body is what the spirit is using, but we take it the other way around. So life becomes difficult in that way. Any thoughts or questions or, or comments about this uh, poem? I really like this, the part of um, emptying, being, being and emptying your, I guess, you know, your thoughts or your uh, being ready to, to, to take it in, I guess, is, um, okay. yeah, that's what came out to me. Yes, yes, yes. It's like really getting, getting, clearing your, your mind to be ready to take this, to take all of this energy. Uh, if you don't prepare yourself for that part, like you were saying a little bit in meditation, a little bit from that, and getting ready. The first thing that came up to my mind for that two minutes was, I have to ask for forgiveness. Wow. You know, the first thing is like, yes. You know, I, mean, I, I want to ask for forgiveness. Yes. But preparing your mind mentally to receive this. Yes. So emptying yes. what's going on. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful how that came up. Yeah. And what happens is, see, so this is the physical part, the body part of us, and this is the spiritual part. When we stop eating and drinking, and that's not a simple thing because we really relate to this part a lot with that part of us. We are invited not to look here, to look here. So when you say, I want to ask for forgiveness, you are basically, we are invited to look here, and this part, this space here, is the breath, is the spirit, is where the forgiver is known. It's basically where the sustainer is known, where the loving is known, where the uh, merciful is known, where the compassionate is known, you know, where the, uh, you know, we can say that, I want to really feel that I am loved by God, this love. I want to really feel, feel that, you know, God didn't forget about me. So, this is the time. So, since I'm not looking here, look backwards. And when I look backwards, we realize, wow, we are being taken care of. There is this aliveness back there. Back, meaning, you know, back, metaphorically speaking. Uh, the formless. So, this is the form. Form meaning physical. This is formless. No physical. It's the non-physical aspect. The, and we can, so we can bring the non-physical energy to the physical space in Ramadan. For is when you said physical healing. A, a critical part of the physical healing is drawing, as you said, drawing that non-physical energy towards the body, inviting myself to all my cells, feeling like that light is going to all my cells and rejuvenating them. Uh, and we can do that, that forgiveness, that love. Um, so that can be part of our daily practice, right? We concentrate so many times, you know, uh, I have to read the Quran, all the Quran in Ramadan. And that's a beautiful thing, you know. 
It's really beautiful. Uh, sometimes, though, uh, we feel we are having a hard time doing that. We really don't want to do it, but we force ourselves to do it. That's also good. But maybe we can spend also some 10 minutes, 15 minutes, where we just wash ourselves, like close our eyes, and visualize, if you will, visualize how we are right now without the food, without the water, being washed with this divine energy. That formless one is actually right here. Feel it and recognize it. You know, even the last 10 days, it means the most spiritual. We are being invited, you know, we are prepared, right? So the last 10 days is amazing. We become almost like spirits, you know, if, if we take it from this perspective, right? If we recognize that it's the feast for the spirit. So we say the night of power is the last 10 days. That also has a very significant meaning. Inshallah, maybe we can do a class about it during Ramadan about that. But, but it's, it is opening to the spirit that, that, uh, that is why Ramadan is there. It's opening us to the spirit. That's why Prophet Muhammad received the revelation in Ramadan because he was preparing himself to it by focusing on his spiritual side. So he received it. It's not like you know he was so much focusing on his physical side that he received the revelation. He went to the cave. Right? So my cave, my cave is Ramadan. Cave meaning I am turning spiritual cave. Turning from the physical to the non-physical even for this time. 15 hours of my day. And then when I turn this way, the next part of the day, which is the eating part, becomes also spiritual. Because when you are ready, then you bring the spirit to the, to the table. So, oh my God, all this food is from Allah. It's not by itself. It's not. And then you say, I want to thank Allah for all of this. You do some extra prayers if you want to. Uh, and you pray, pray meaning, you just want to rejoice in this in this energy of, of the divine, just I want to it everywhere of my body, of my life, of everywhere in my uh, experience. Uh, yeah. Any comments, questions? Okay. Uh, next one. Uh, Ramadan came, the true feast is with us. The luck came, that the key is with us. Mouth is closed, spiritual eyes are opened. That brilliance that the eye sees with us. We have clean soul and heart with fasting. The dirt which has been with us is cleansed now. So stress comes from fasting. But the invisible treasure of heart is with us. Ramadan came to the heart's temple. The one who created heart is with us. So this dirt that we are cleansing in Ramadan is the dirt of identifying ourselves only with the physical part. Recog thinking as if this physical parts are happening by themselves, not recognizing that all of these physical things are connected to this formless one. Our, he is creating them every moment. We are cleansing ourselves from that. Like, no, 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 everything is connected to him. It's, it's in such a way an ama amazing uh, uh, cleanser uh, and we ask for forgiveness for for thinking that I exist by myself for thinking that I am here by myself and he is somewhere there it's like wow how can that even be every moment you are here and, and then we open ourselves to that reality, to that understanding. Yeah. Any comments? I think uh, when we 
the same thing this also is that we we have everything that we need already. So and we have to tap into it. We're gonna need to unlock it. And that's beautiful to do you know what I'm saying? Any other comments or thoughts? To research that guy that uh, passed for thirty, <laughs> because that's, you know this is proving that scientifically everything we have is yeah. we don't need to move. I can't remember his name. Well, many, many. He that. had health issues. There was one of the comments lower, like one of the classic ones. We did it for forty days. In fact, yeah. in fact, I can many of them did it for forty days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They follow that understanding. It's like they would call it. Uh, it has actually a spiritual. There is a name for it. They go for a forty-day retreat. Yeah. That's a very common in, in, in for uh, for Muslims in the past. Uh, I mean, apart from Muslim, like he would the Quran was received. I think he was fasting too, right? Because he would go in the mountains. Yes, uh, we don't know if he was fasting the exact same way, but probably he was. He was, you know, just uh, no. Much less food and much less water. Yes, he was just towards himself. Uh, yeah, I think like if he wasn't lame, yeah. I feel like he was the more of everything better. Yes, like, yes, yes. And he was a believer at yeah. the time. You know, he was following the footsteps of Prophet Abraham. He just didn't, you know, have the complete right. story. <laughs> yeah. But he, he, he was doing that probably to. To get that spiritual cl cl clearance, uh, cleansing for himself, and then of course you know he was invited to to receive uh, messages from the divine through that. We can also be receiving messages from the divine, not of course revelation like the Quran, but inspirations like all that what you said, being alert, realizing like how actually everything is alive. Feeling almost the tree speaks to you, like speaks not words, but some for some people it might. But oh my God, this is so beautiful! Or oh wow! Or being little close to, to cry, you feel somebody is hurt. You're like, how can I help this? Person? Why, why did you become such compassionate? Yeah, this fasting helps because when we are fasting, we start to feel that compassionate side more of us, not the animalistic side that just concentrates on the physical side. But that, wow, we want to care for other people. That's why many people do their zakah or alms giving during Ramadan because they feel that, oh, I want to have people, or they want to do, or they want to pray for people, or maybe they have a longing to do some service. Uh, they, these ideas come to them during Ramadan um, uh, because we feel that. And there is no reason why not to continue that, as you said afterwards. But but it is a special time because it's a community also that is doing it with us. Um, yeah, um, beautiful. Sometimes you're talking, it makes me wonder just because when I think about it, I think our relationship with food is different from the back in the days. I think about the food that we were eating because they didn't have you know, like the same pieces that we have. So I'm just it just makes me wonder, is that part of how you continue kind of that spirituality, you know, after Ramadan, it's you kind of train your body, so maybe if you don't go back to, you know, that big pace to where, you know, before you can't do anything, so here you go, another, you know, you always waste it. It's, in a way, I guess if you try to continue it to where you're more moderate and more aware, maybe that's how you, part of how you continue, um, I guess, experiencing the benefits that you see during the month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It sounds beautiful to me. That's what some people, I know they make it their goal to fast the seven days after Ramadan, yes. but they can still do yes. it. Yes. 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 Yes.
uh, you can. It's very good for your for your physical health, uh, but of course, you know that's just side effect, right? But it it works together because even if you don't have an intention to fast uh, for a religious reason, just by the fasting, uh, 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 whoever is doing it feels more spirit, even if they don't identify it, even if they don't realize what it is, uh, they feel more uh, spiritual in any way, and that helps uh, also. Okay. Any other thoughts? Well, <laughs> yes. I haven't said anything, but this that first line is kind of hits on what you just said. Even you know, when you're fasting, you feel the spirit more. For me, being non-Muslim, I love the fasting during Ramadan because I think the true feast is with Ramadan. It's like not about the food; it's about the spiritual. So when you are fasting and you feel hungry or you have a moment of weakness because you know you really want coffee right now or something, and you turn to prayer instead, you you, sh you turn to God really? instead. There really is a true fast, a true feast in the spirituality that you receive during the month of Ramadan. So I love Ramadan, and I feel like it's the most spiritual time. Of our family, it's the best thing. I was looking forward to. I wish, you know, I wish I could sell the idea to Christians because the fast that most Christians do is when I did it, it wasn't as fulfilling as the fast during Ramadan. I just think it's really good. How is it to Christians? I mean, how is it to Christians? I know they eat, but they just on Friday through Lent, um, they're supposed to eat two small meals and only one big meal, and the big meal is and not meat at all on Friday. Mm -hmm. So, to some people, that's a big thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's how it's uh, stated in the Bible? Is that how it's, uh, is it how Jesus intended for it to be, or was it tra changed or somehow translated differently? Is that how it is? Like, it's, from what I understood, because I was raised Catholic as well. Um, I think biblically it's very different because Isa like followed the Judaic laws and their fast is very similar to ours. Mm -hmm. Not the whole month. But I think um, like the Lent came more after um, like the Catholicism. Yeah, there is value. It's beautiful, and I think uh, many people are getting so many benefits. It's the same. It's the same. It's the same. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same. All all traditions have it. Buddhists have it. Hindu, Hindus have it. Yeah, all in different ways. Yeah. Yes. So I think whatever fasting is, all if it's done for for God, then we can find that connection. <laughs> One thing that I want to mention here is that sometimes we want first we need to come up with our goal, our heart's longing. I really want this Ramadan to be the best Ramadan ever. I really want it. To to oh, to say this open means opening, you know, like sometimes you talk with friends and say, Wow, oh, I'm not back home, it's not like that. Let's say they are from or, or, you know, let's say they grew up in Turkey. So oh, I'm not back home this way, but we are here and we oh here so it will be difficult. But anyway, so we already we are already not going to have the best summer of them ever. Because we already determine yourself up for that. Yes. So, so instead of that, how about, how about, if really, really, we put it as a goal to have it the best, and then 
feel inside of us if there are any obstacles. Let's say now in my friend's case, oh Ramadan back home I feel better. I, I, I wish I was I wish I was in Turkey, let's say. I wish I was in Morocco, whatever it is. Okay, so I wish I was in the south, southern hemisphere. Right now it's winter time there. Oh, the blood is great, you know. So we can just go there. I mean, whatever it is. Or, you know, uh, what are the obstacles that I fear will deny me this? Bring that out in me. To let them. To let, give them some space, but you have the goal, and then ask God to help you with all of these obstacles, to see maybe that these obstacles can be opportunities. In fact, not having Ramadan in Morocco makes you feel more vulnerable because you are away from your family. How can I use this vulnerability to feel, to feel the, the closeness of God? You know, to so this vulnerability, I am like a skin, I am like a uh, a needy person with my only by myself here, have no my no family. Oh, wow, but I have the spirit, I have God with me. See? So I am not letting the big family be another hurdle to not feel. Now if I was there it would be difficult. It's something different. What I'm trying to say is that how can all of these obstacles become opportunities for me to realize the happiness This is an exercise we can go through, but unless we, we think about this, because we say, oh, yeah, of course, I want it to be the happiest, but then there are few obstacles. You know? I get, I get tired. I don't want to get tired. Or, or you know, uh, uh, it's, it's, I have issues with, with, with the heat. So put it, that, put it out there. And then work through each one of them and see if this obstacle becomes somehow uh, an opportunity for something that you didn't know or you didn't expect. Maybe some new revelation uh, to you. I think the obstacle sometimes hmm. forces you to practice humility because sometimes the obstacle is stuff you have no control over. And, and also, like, for me, one of the biggest challenges is that I can't always go to the question. I have a child with special needs. Mm -hmm. And I used to go to the question all the time, some time away every day. Uh -huh. And I stopped going for a long time, for uh -huh. a lot of Ramadan, until last Ramadan, I was like, that's it. I'm going to the mess shit, I don't care if people, you know. Because you know, they can think about yes. the kids in general. Yes, yes, yes. Especially some of the um, which I understand, like, people are trying to focus on. But I said I'm just going to try and like, hold on to my attention. If I can only go for one hour, if I can go for 30 minutes. So it's one of the hardest things for me because I feel like I'm not doing my best if I don't get to do that away. I mean, yes. if I do that away at home, it's the same 10 servers because I don't know Arabic. You know? See, but uh, yes. So one thing that I can tell you, for instance, uh, Mary was alone. In that well, that, See, so so that your 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 place can be that home, and you are doing such a prophetic thing. You are taking care of a special need child. Uh, so the, so that to, to feel that wow, this is actually more rejoicing. You know what I mean? Like 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 because sometimes we get pressures from the society. For instance, I get the pressure. I have to breakfast. Every day in Masjid. Personally, for instance, it does, it's not very, you know, I, I like sometimes to breakfast by myself. Yeah. feels, and I feel very, and sometimes I like to do the other one too. So, but if I have trained myself that I have to, that's my pressure. Instead of that, take it out. Does that make you feel closer to Allah or does that make you feel not? If not, open yourself up inside of you. What would be your best yet? amazing Ramadan with the constraints that you have and suddenly I said wow it might be just in that dark night of the hour maybe I can't do the eight rakas I'll do just two yeah. but I'll just sit and that's sitting and I feel wow oh Allah 
without you, nothing can happen. That recognition can be my like 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 my uh, night of power. I mean, like you feel the connection. And what I mean is, what you said is beautiful. And that's just an example. I'm saying to all of us, including myself, is to invite ourselves to find. How our obstacles can become beautiful opportunities, and, and what is the best God, way to? to God said, yeah. "We want speeds for you, and yeah. not hardship. We want you to complete the prescribed to God for having time. But you want speeds for you. Don't make your heart too hard. That's my problem. I'm so used to it. Like, so I feel like I have to stop. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, what is in your face? You're trying to put too much weight on yourself. Yeah. I feel like I'm not doing my duty by the time. I always do yeah. that. Like, like, I want to. This is my goal this, this yeah. Ramadan. I can yeah. say it openly. I want to do Taraweeh before I do it to ask myself, I, will I do this to thank Allah with joy? Or do I feel this? So I want to feel it and, I, and then I want to do it. Yeah. And, and I want to do it as an expression of that joy. Mm -hmm. I want to express it. Of that joy, and, and I want I wanted to keep it sweet. Some nights it might be difficult to do it because you have some other things. Yeah. But sometimes we put this shame and blame, and uh, exactly. uh, and that shame and blame is not what the spirit, what God wants from us. He wants us to feel that He is taking care of us in this month, not not uh, you know waiting for us to say, oh no 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 you, not this one, not this one. No, He wants us to really. Feel his proximity. Even sometimes I feel, you know, so they, I have some friends, like the friend is sick. Or, oh, I had this friend just recently. He wanted to fast. And uh, it was uh, Nisf Shaban, the, the half of Shaban, which is a special night. So the day after that, he wanted to fast, but he was traveling back to his home to the West Coast. I said, you know, I want to fast. But then I, I, I saw that he was so upset, you know, he wants to fast, but it's a traveling time, and uh, he couldn't sleep well. And I just said, why are you fasting? <laughs> so right now, actually, I really want to break this fast. But I just feel like if I don't, this will be... I said, you know, brother, you can do whatever you want. But actually, during, during uh, travel, there is such a... God says you can break your fast. This is even not a... This is not even a compulsory fast. It's up to you. But, but uh, God also wants us to take some of His, some of what He gives to us. These are like gifts that He gives to us. So we can like take of His favor. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, um, anyways, uh, it's inshallah. May Allah make uh, Ramadan a beautiful time for all of us and. Uh, a time when we really connect with the divine here. Like, recognize that Allah is transcendent, God is transcendent, but He is also imminent. He is, he is everywhere, but He is right here. He is creating the whole universe, but He is creating me right now. So there is that dance between the transcendence and the imminence. The proximity of Him and the all. Of, what, of, of all that he is doing. So maybe we can reflect of that proximity, recognize that that he's right here, right, right here. Right here. So uh, with that, uh, we can close. I, I think uh, the the kids will do something for us today. But um, any last comment and minute comments uh, that you want to raise before we end uh, this session? Maybe we can read the next, last poem and without comments. But yes. Oh, uh, yes. 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 I think we passed the yeah, hour. But knowing that is the, the, the gratitude. Having gratitude. Yes. Having being thankful. 
Yes. For every little thing. It's, it's a big, big thing. Of, it's the paradise, living in paradise. Yes. Not making excuses or not making complaints yes. or, you know, um, trying not to get into fights or arguments or, you know, being. Just trying to be peaceful. So, Just being so peaceful. Be grateful. Exactly. Let's end. Let's end with the last poem. Uh, uh, and we read it and we'll stop. Yes. There is hidden sweetness in the stomach, stomach emptiness. We are loose no more, no less. If the sound box stuck full of anything, no music. If the brain and belly are burning clean with passion, Every moment a new song comes out of the fire. The fog clears and new energy makes you run. Run up into the steps in front of you. Be emptier and cry like me and students cry. Thank you. Thank you very much.